Now, some people might get mad at me for saying this, but hard work doesn't have to go to waste. But a lot of times it does, because a lot of hardworking adults today put themselves in less than desirable positions because they're making mistakes that they don't realize that they're making financially. And I'm here to tell you, I've made every single mistake that's on the list for today's video. And I'm here to help you and I'm here to show you exactly why these are mistakes and how to avoid them. So without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into it. If you don't know who I am, I'm Reggie Bryant. Nice to meet you. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and on this channel, I talk about personal finance and personal growth. We're gonna jump straight into this today. So the first mistake is not being financially educated. This is something that runs very deep in most adults in the world, and, and it runs into several households and friendships and a bunch of things, just the lack of knowledge. We have so many resources, especially nowadays, and we just don't have the knowledge. So a few examples are, obviously we have the, if you don't know how to save, if you don't know how to budget, if you don't know that it's possible to automate your savings account, you won't be able to save as well as someone who has that information. But it goes way further and way deeper than that. Not being financially educated means you're not aware of the opportunities around you to make more money. You're not aware of the industries, the jobs, the ways to make money that are around you that could help improve your situation if you felt like your financial situation needed improvement. And last time I checked, most people I know, they wanna make more money. So that's a big gap of knowledge when you don't understand and you don't know and why there's such valuable opportunities. If you lack financial education, you probably don't understand how taxes work. You probably don't understand how to build wealth from an investing standpoint. And a lot of folks, you know, nowadays, and even still like to this day, don't know what a 401k is. And if you work a full-time job, chances are your company offers a 401k or some form of investment for your retirement account. And the whole purpose of working is to have a retirement account. But there's so many young and older people who don't even have one set up and don't even know what it is. And no one in the company seems to really be going out of their way to be like, hey, this is what a 401k is. This will get you to retirement. If you don't have one, these are the risks you run into. And the big risk that you run into is not being able to retire. So you work all these years, hard work. You know what I'm saying? You're putting in that hard work for all these years and you can't even retire at the end of it. And you still have to work beyond your 60s, beyond your 70s. Life is meant for much more than this. And just sitting down for a few minutes, for a few hours throughout like a month, like you will learn what you need to know about 401ks, about Roth IRAs, and you can learn about tax advantages for both of them, and you can learn how compound interest works and how you can actually make more money on the money that's being invested. And you can learn that, hey, actually, if I put a certain amount of money into this investment, my company will personally match it and throw me some free money. And a lot of people just don't know that, so they miss out. And I'll never forget me being a passionate person about personal finance and about investing and understanding the power behind investing, I started a job as a supervisor and I was walking around and I was just talking to people and I'm just like, hey, the 401k program at this company is great, right? They're like, 401k, what's that? And it'll be like 40, 50 year old people. And I'd be like, sit down right now, we're gonna go over this. I'm gonna show you what a 401k is and you can decide for yourself. But I strongly, strongly recommend that you give this some attention because this is how you retire, like this is a big deal. And I was in shock of how many 23 year olds, how many 40 something year olds didn't have 401ks. They didn't have the information, they didn't have the knowledge. And that's not the only thing, that's just from a future standpoint, but think about the present, like think about right now. So many folks are out here struggling with money because of the fact that they don't understand what the cost of living is and how much money they should be spending on their living expenses compared to how much money they make per year. There's just an overall lack of understanding and that's something that you really want to avoid, especially as a hardworking adult. You work hard for your money. You're probably making good money. You're probably doing something very important that's very useful to society. And that's awesome, but you don't want to do all that work in vain. I promise you, you don't. And the reason I'm telling you all this is simply because ignorance about something does not separate you from its consequences. You're probably someone who's very much like myself, who likes to do meaningful things and make money in the process, but you probably wanna spend time with your family, go on vacation, build wealth, build a retirement account, learn how to invest, all that good stuff. You wanna get your money together, you wanna stack up your money, you wanna get to a place 
where maybe no one in your family has ever gotten to financially and you want to be that first one. You want to be that example. You want to be someone who is able to provide and have financial security and have financial freedom and do the things that you've always wanted to do without having to worry about your finances going by the wayside. And so in order to do that, you've got to educate yourself. And a book I would recommend to anyone about finances in general is a book called Money Master the Game. It'll show you how anyone can become a millionaire. I mean, most of us are thousandaires, you know what I'm talking about, but when you learn how to properly use your money and how to properly think about money, thousands turn into millions. It might take a while, but who cares? It's better to get there than to not get there in my opinion, especially if you have big, big lofty goals like myself. Speaking of goals, the second thing on the list is not having a clear plan. And this actually runs hand in hand with something else. So this is technically a two in one, but I'm gonna start with not having a plan. We all have goals and there's no doubt about that. You probably want to buy a house. You might wanna buy a dream car. You might want to make a certain amount of money. Let's say six figures, 100,000, 120,000, 150,000. You wanna make money because you do hard work. You do meaningful work. You do smart work even but you have to have a clear plan to get there. And one of the biggest mistakes that people have had is not having a plan to get there. And I'll never forget when I was 21, everyone in their mom was asking me, so what's your five-year plan? And I was like, what's that? You know, like, you know, your five-year plan. What, what do you plan on doing for the next five years? I mean, sure, you've gotten here, you've landed a great full-time job fresh out of college, but from here, what's your plan? For some reason, I was under the programming that once you get the job, that's that's it. You don't really need to think that much about anything else. You got the job, just keep going to work, keep going home. But times are different now. Like It encouraged me to think about upward mobility, and it encouraged me to think about my personal finances. And it's like, well, I'm making money now, so I'm not really used to doing that. So what do I do with my money? Like, What do I do with it? It's meant to be spent, but at the same time, I don't want to go without it. Like, what if something happens? Sure, I can buy things that I've never been able to buy that I've always wanted to get, but now I have to actually be responsible with my money so I can still pay my bills and have some money left over at the end of every month. So what do I need to do with my money? I didn't really have a clear plan for my personal finances, for my career, or really for myself. All I was really concerned about was, I'm happy, I'm successful, I'm making all this money now, I just got my own first place, I got my car, you know what I'm saying? The car is paid off. I was on cloud nine, I was in such a state of euphoria that I really didn't consider that I should probably be planning for my future. And what that put me into was a place of not being sure. Now, of course, once I got all this feedback and I started really thinking about it and I actually looked up what a five-year plan was, how to properly put together a five-year plan, in a hurry, I made a five-year plan. But before I did that, work had already started. I was already learning and trying to you know, save the world at work and everything in my first ever management role. And I was just like, wow, this is a lot. This is really overwhelming. This is really challenging. And of course, I learned that the company I worked for at the time was extremely cutthroat. I was like, man, this is kind of scary, low key. What am I gonna do about this? I even started to self-doubt a little bit. I was like, who am I to think that I can go anywhere in this company? This is like really tough work. I don't understand how these people have done this for so long. This is crazy. I'm the youngest one in here. I'm in charge of people twice and triple my age. This, this is wild. And so, that set me back because I had to learn all that stuff. And that was an extremely tremendous learning curve. It was such a learning curve that when I got home, I was drained. I couldn't do anything else but sleep. Sometimes I didn't even eat. And so imagine doing that while also trying to learn personal finance and trying to learn how to budget and, and where to put your money and how to make extra money on the side. And I was doing all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm what you would call an overachiever, but like when it comes to life, you've got to achieve certain things to get to a certain place. And I had big goals because when I finally set out my five-year plan, I knew in five years, I want to at least be making double what I'm making right now. I want to be in a higher level role and I still want to have a work-life balance. I didn't know how I was going to get to the work-life balance part, but I knew that I wanted to make at least double what I was making then just without the overtime because I had an extreme amount of overtime then. But my work-life balance was trash. Like I didn't get to spend time with friends or family and 
it ruined some relationships. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I've gotten into it with some of my friends because of my lack of availability. But I guess that's just life that happens. But I knew that was one of my goals. I had to have a work-life balance into that. Now, fast forward to now, I have all that and more. And it's amazing. And I had to actually do the things that were on my list of plans. But the main reason that it's important to have a five-year plan isn't just because you can actually get there by taking those actionable steps that you make for yourself. Because the truth is, I didn't get here by myself. I definitely had mentorship and I had people I looked up to and I asked questions and I was just really hungry. I wanted to get to a certain spot and I, I put the work in to get to where I'm at, but I had like assistance, like I had help. I had people who were like, hey, don't do it that way, try it this way. And that really changed my mindset, how to think, not just about life or just about my job, but about money as a whole. Because one of my five-year plan goals was, I wanna save like $60,000 by this date, and I wanna have all my debt paid off by this date. And it was like all supposed to be done by the first year, which was absolutely insane. And I can say it was insane, because for the amount of money I was making, I was making that like per year. How am I gonna, <laughs> I would have to save 100% of my income and then come up with like another 30 grand to pay off my student loans. It just, it wasn't gonna happen that year. But my mentor told me, he was like, look man, like you're doing good and I'm proud of you, but just so you know, you will never be wealthy by just saving money. You won't, that's not gonna happen. That is a pipe dream, that is a fairy tale, that is not real life. He didn't say it that aggressive, but <laughs> he said it pretty calm, but I took it as like, man, this is like, I, I never thought about that. So it was kind of like, body slamming my brain because I was like, dang, I, I had it all wrong this whole time, which is fine, right? That's a mistake that I learned from them that I'm able to teach you guys on this channel. But that's an example of how my mindset changed about a lot of things and a lot of things that changes about work as well. We can talk about that in a different video, but I would say the biggest mindset shift that I had, and this is where the two in one piece of it comes in. I realized that when you have a plan, you're more dedicated to it and you're more strict about it, at least I am. And when it's written in paper and you know how close you are to your goal based off of what you set for yourself and you know what you're striving for every single day, you have a little bit more resilience to BS, if you know what I mean. Like I went through a lot of crap at my first ever job, which is the job I'm still talking about in this video. And there were times where I wanted to just walk out, quit, not come back. But I had to think to myself like, okay, well for what? What is that gonna do for you? Who is that giving power to, you or them? You're giving power to this company. You're giving power to the people within the company that are pissing you off every day just because they're acting crazy for five minutes out of a 12 hour day. Are you really gonna do that to yourself? Are you really gonna sacrifice your future to appease some company who doesn't even want you? Because my peers, they didn't even want me. They were like, ah, oh, this kid isn't gonna last. Like the first day I stepped foot in there, they were like, yeah, we got bets on when you're gonna leave. You ain't gonna last six months, boy. It was a country place, so they really did say it just like that. I was like, all right, we'll see, we'll see. See me, I just like proving people wrong. But anyway, I say all that to let you know what came with the adversarial environment was emotional intelligence, mental toughness, and resilience like no one has that I've ever met. Because I went through it every single day, for almost two years. Doing something I didn't like every day, doing something that I feared to do every single day, having self-doubt while leading a team every single day and just learning and just improving and getting better and changing my mindset and getting tougher and getting stronger physically, mentally, spiritually every single day. Because if you don't have emotional intelligence, if you don't have that mental toughness, you'll be just like everyone else who gets a good job, gets a really good gig, and then just quits. I understand that there's a point where you can't tolerate certain things anymore, but always have something lined up because I wanted to walk up out of there without anything lined up. And I was told by everybody <laughs> that I went to about it, which wasn't that many people, but they were like, bro, don't do that, that's crazy. I understand you're upset, I understand you're frustrated. Line something else up and then, then quit. Build your experience, milk that company for all it's worth, go somewhere else, and then give them your expertise and give them your best, right? And that's what I did. But I can't tell you how many folks have lost their jobs because they want to throw hands or lost their jobs because they wanted to go spend time with the girl instead of coming to work. I can't tell you how many people walked away from a job that was good, that they didn't have anything else lined up to do instead because they were stressed out for one day. There has to be a certain amount of toughness. As an adult, you have to take accountability. That job didn't force you to work there. You decided to work there. You have to deal with the consequences. 
And the next tip I want to talk to you about actually has a little to do with what I just said about the emotional intelligence, but this comes from a slightly different mindset. A big mistake that a lot of hardworking adults make is not having financial discipline. Like, I say hardworking adults. So most adults who are hardworking or who have dual income, like husband and wife type of income, you know what I mean? Or they're just working really hard. They went to school, they got degrees, they got certifications, they got a trade, they got something. They have a valuable skill that they can add to this world. No matter what your skill is, you're a valuable person and you have capabilities beyond your wildest beliefs and dreams. And I don't say that to hype you up, I legitimately mean that. And I've seen people who have thought so low of themselves and I've seen people who had no future for themselves really build themselves up and get to a better place than a lot of my friends who have master's degrees, to be honest with you. And you really do have to believe in yourself. And with self-belief comes discipline. And another reason I tell you all that is because you just may not realize your potential yet. And it's hard to realize your potential in a world that is very materialistic, that is very show-offy, a world that is very controlled by social media and comparisons and, well, this person has this, how they get all that, how they get that BMW, how they get that chain, how they get that girl, how they get that house. You know what I mean? Like people just get jealous. And when you're in a world that is very much engulfed in that, it's hard to see your worth sometimes because you might see someone who really spent time working on themselves, but all you see is the gold at the end. You know what I mean? You don't really see all the hardships, all the struggles, all the hard working that you're doing now that they put in, you know what I'm saying? For you don't even know how many years they put in work. You don't know what they went through because no one's really telling you. And that's why I try on this channel to put as much of my hardships and my struggles at the forefront so you know, like, I didn't get to a six-figure status overnight. I didn't get to understand personal finances overnight. This took years and I'm still learning every single day and I'm still not where I want to be and I'm still not perfect. But as long as you improve every day, you'll get there. But I tell you that because it's hard to discipline yourself in this world. And that's why you've got to learn to stay in your own lane and learn to look at yourself in the mirror and only compare yourself to yourself. That's where financial discipline comes from. That is a fundamental piece of personal finances. That's where saving money comes from. That's where investing comes from. That's where everything that you're building your money on and building your generational wealth from and building up your family from and being able to put food on the table and being able to have lights on and have entertainment and stuff and being able to have fun on the weekends. That's where all that comes from. If you don't have discipline you have nothing because you may have fun now you may have a nice place now you may be relaxing right now but the moment something goes wrong if you don't have financial discipline you will fall apart and so will everything that you own because you'll have to sell it to someone who does have the money you get what i'm saying and i'm not saying this to scare you i'm not saying this to be negative i'm saying this because it is real and it is a fact look at 2020 Everybody thought life was good. Everybody thought it was butterflies, rainbows, ice cream cones. They thought it was sweet. But life is unpredictable, and we don't know what's going to happen. So you can't walk around thinking everything's going to be okay all the time because that's not real life. And my introduction to the real world was a harsh one. It was an introduction that said, nobody don't care about you. You're just a young kid out of college. No one cares if you lose your job tomorrow. They, got, they care about their families and, and what they got. They care about their own. They don't care about you. They don't care about your success. They don't care about how sad your life is now. They don't care about how much you hate your job. It's a dog eat dog world out there. And that taught me a very good skill. And that skill is the mindset of maturity. That skill is having discipline to not give a crap about what's going on outside of you, to not give a crap about what this person has to say about you or you know be in your head about stuff you have to build that maturity you have to be like well that sucks i'm it's just it's basically being in the matrix and taking the red pill and being like oh man this is how it is this is reality because i could have believed that all the people smiling in my face were trustworthy i could have believed that the company cared about me and my well-being but if but the red pill said hey if this company truly cared about your well-being, then why in the F are they working you seven days a week? 
12 hour days for six days, eight hours on the seventh day. If they truly cared about your well-being, they don't care about your well-being. They care about what you can do for the company at the expense of your health, at the expense of your mental health, at the expense of your endurance, at the expense of your hunger, at the expense of your hopes and dreams. Because what hopes and dreams could you possibly be working on after a 12 hour shift? six days a week and then on the eighth day they cut you a little break so you can work for eight hours huh they don't care about you so that was my welcoming to the real world right i thought everything was going to be all positive and nice and for some people it is some people land really great jobs with great companies that care about them but i'm telling you because i had such a bad experience fresh out of college fresh into the real world by myself on my own away from my family in a different city I'm telling you, that's what has made me disciplined financially because I understood all I've got is myself. All I've got is my own tact and my own emotional intelligence and my own strategizing when it comes to personal finance. So if I can do anything, I'm going to be financially responsible. I messed up at first by getting a townhouse that was more expensive than what I should have been paying for. I noticed that and I was like, okay, well, next time I know I'm going to move into a place that's smaller, that's more affordable, even if I'm making more money. And that's exactly what I did. There's no need to show everybody what you got. But having that lack of financial discipline is what makes a lot of people who are six-figure earners, or even if not six figures, let's say they're making 75, 85, 95 a year. That's a lot of money, especially to make as a single person, like not married, like it's just you. That's a lot of money to make. And that's an impressive feat. I don't care what anyone says. Inflation might be up right now, but that is an impressive feat. And if you're making that kind of money, you should be very proud of yourself. If you're making money, period, be proud of yourself, but always look to improve. But there's a lot of people in those ranges that I just mentioned, you know, between 75 and let's say 120 grand a year who are living paycheck to paycheck, not because they don't necessarily make enough money, but a lot of it is because of their spending habits. A lot of it is because of things that they own because they want to show everybody what they got. But there's no Mercedes in the world that's going to be so impressive that is going to comfort you from having a bank account that you can barely look at every single day because you know that you wish there was more money in it. You ever had somebody that was like, I don't even want to look at my bank account right now. I, you, you have those friends. I do, too. But that's what I'm talking about. You want to be able to look at your bank account every day and smile while you look at it because you're proud of what's in there. Not being proud of your external possessions that will not last forever and then look into your bank account and see, oh man, I only got 20 bucks. And that's real. Like that's real life. That happens every single day. Don't be that person. And before I get to my next point, I just want to ask you for one favor. If you found value in this video and you really like this video, send this video to one person that you care about because there's no sense in taking all this just for yourself. It'll also help the channel out a lot and reach a lot more people that it's meant for because I want to help as many adults as possible, especially 25 and up. That is my target audience. And I want to show you guys how to not only use your money properly, but I want to show you how to invest and how to grow your money and make passive income and do more things and have more flexibility and really see what you can do with money in life. It is extremely powerful and I just want to help as many people as possible. But those are my three mistakes that I would recommend every single hardworking adult in the world avoids. I'm not saying that you're going to necessarily be rich by avoiding these things, but you'll be able to gain a very powerful foundation. You can build wealth on top of it, especially when you apply the things that I talk about in my other videos. If you like this video, check out my other money advice videos. I have a whole playlist full of them. I think you would love them. And every single one of them is different. Some are for young adults. Some are for all adults. Just check them all out. Anyway. That's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.